Turn with me in your Bibles to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 15. I never had this happen before, but so it happened, that means that there could be some in here. I didn't say the book of Psalms. I said the Song of Solomon. Chapter 2, if you don't know where that is, just go to the table of contents and then just go right there to the page. The Song of Solomon, chapter 2, we are going to look at verse 15. That's it. Just the one verse. And we're going to dive in, have some fun. Y'all don't seem like y'all too much away. First service is a little more lively than y'all. Y'all, y'all up? Y'all wait? Y'all have y'all a cup of coffee? Uh, or whatever. It's still just a few of y'all clapping y'all <laughs> <laughs> Y'all making it hard for a brother up here. You know what I'm saying? Good grief. Song of Solomon chapter 2 and verse 15. And Father, we come before you as humbly as we know how. You're King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the one who sent Jesus to pay the ultimate price for our sin on the cross. And dear God, I pray that you would unclog our ears so we can hear what you're going to say to us today, that you will soften hearts. So the seed of the word of God may go upon good soil and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And dear God, I just pray your spirit will come upon us, Lord, so we can be not just hearers of your word, but doers. You said this man and woman will be blessed in what he does. And so, Lord, we do pray once again. Lord, for those precious couples making their way back and for Pastor uh, David and uh, Marie, that your blessings will be upon them, oh God. Oh Lord, what a great responsibility to oversee such a great church as this. So Lord, we pray your blessings now upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Song of Solomon chapter 2, we're going to look at verse 15. And the title of this message is, Beware of Foxes. Beware of Foxes. So, you know, so some of you don't think that this is just a, a couple's thing and, you know, maybe you're single and, um, and stuff like that. Hey, we're going we're gonna to hit everybody. Everybody's going to be hit. So you don't have to say, let me pack up and go and wait for Pastor David next week. I can pack up and leave. No, everybody's going to get hit today. Everybody's going to get a little touch of this. So beware of foxes. Now, a fox is known to be cunning, sneaky, and sly. So there are some things or people that Satan uses to, to slip their way into our relationships, into our marriages, and in our walks with the Lord. And they come in and they're sly, they, they're sneaky, and they are very slippery. And we got to be aware of these things. This is why we come to church. We come to church to worship God, but we come to church to be instructed on how to become more like Jesus Christ. We come here not just to be hearers of the word, but to be a doer. And so we're going to get some instructions on some things that, that can act as a fox that can slip in and cause major problems. Look what it says there in verse 15. It says, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. We know the song of, uh, in the Song of Solomon, Solomon is... Uh, they, him and the Shulamite woman, they are married and they are looking back on the time by which they, they dated, by which the time that they had issues, they got married. They, it, it, so they're married looking back. And here it is in this part of the Song of Solomon. Notice it says, catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vine. See, the worst thing that you can have in your vineyard is a fox because he would eat the blossoms and you would never get a bud, which means that you would never get a grape. So you want to keep foxes out of your vineyard. 
And so too, you want to keep foxes out of your relationships because it will keep it from blooming. It will keep it from maturing and become God honoring. So at this particular time, they will build a wall around the vineyards for the purpose of keeping that little fox out. So with this in mind, we, we see that there can be problems in any and all relationships. Little foxes can get into the vineyard of our lives and the, the vineyard of, of our relationships and marriages. And, but I want to bring something to your attention. Notice how it is the woman asking the man to take the initiative in solving the problem. She said, honey, you catch us, the foxes, the little foxes, that's spoiling or can spoil the relationship. There are foxes that can potentially get into every relationship and seek to spoil it. We will look at four of them. Now, I said four, but the Lord revealed a fifth one to me this morning. So I have in my notes four, but we're really going to look at five or four and maybe a bonus. So Roman numeral number one for you note takers, the first fox that can get in, that can spoil any relationship, is number one, the fox of unresolved conflict. Unresolved conflict. When I was younger, I was really good at ping pong. The purpose of me hitting the ball over the net is so the other person can hit it back. So if the person either walks away from the table or ignores the ball altogether, it shows me that this particular person is not playing according to the rules. And a lot of couples have this problem in their relationship and someone in the relationship is not playing according to the rules. We see two ways people deal with conflict. A by ignoring the conflict. They walk away from the conflict and nothing gets resolved. The other person feels like they're alone in the relationship. They are being ignored. This is a bad communicator in the relationship, but uh, the person the, uh, the person who uh, just walks away, what they think, they think that they are keeping the peace. And men, that's usually us. We get to a point when you're my age and older, I mentioned this yesterday, you don't have much fight left in you. Testosterone is gone. You don't have nothing left. So what you do is you walk away in order to keep the peace. Because you don't want Hurricane, your wife's name, to wreak havoc on the home. So you do whatever you can to keep the peace. When we were younger, we put up a fight. Testosterone pumping through our blood and we're putting up a fight. But then you get our age and older. You know, one of the things, one of the things is our motto is we just want peace. And so we will do anything to keep the peace. However, what happens is, this is the problem. You develop, you develop a habit of walking away from conflict. You have a habit of sweeping things under the rug and putting your head in the sand, hoping that the problem goes away, hoping that the hurricane dies down hoping that the lava from the volcano stops running. And the problem didn't go away. Watch this. The problem went unresolved. And man, this is normally us. This is normally us. We, we got this bad. When conflict comes, we just... The wife wants to talk and we, we result to a caveman mentality. Honey, I need to talk. Huh? Oh, can we just talk a minute? Uh -huh. And we just grunt. 
And, 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 and what we do is that, or we continue watching TV, or we continue on our phones, and we just continue. And, we, you know, and when you're my age and older, you, you, you surf through the, the, the social media with this finger. And you just keep it, you just keep it going. And ladies, can I just, can I help you here? I just want to help you. I'm your friend. I came all the way from Virginia to help you. I did. I really did. The time to talk is not during Sports Center, the NFL game, March Madness, the World Cup. That's not the time to talk. You come in with some deep issue, some deep thing about the relationship, let that man watch Sports Center. It's not time to talk during that time and you want to get all deep and then you stomp off because you never listen to me. You're right, not during this time. March Madness is on. And all the men said, amen. <laughs> Even Solomon, who wrote not only this book, he wrote another one called the book of Ecclesiastes. In chapter 3, verse 1, even he said, there's a time for everything under the sun. And that's not the time to come bring up some deep financial relationship issue during Sports Center. He said there's a time for everything under the sun. Also, when I was playing ping pong, I was really good at it. Talked to a a man, after first service, he said, I still play ping pong. He said, I'm about to go play this afternoon. I said, whoa. I said, man, he was easily in his 70s. I said, man, you still getting it done? He said, yeah. I said, okay, okay. I said, what I used to do, I used to play everyone with my left hand. And if I got beat, which was rare, I would say, okay, now let's really play. And he looked at me. He said, really? I said, yeah. Well, I used to do it like that. So when I was playing ping pong, ping pong and what I would do, the way I would win, I'd make you beat yourself. And I'd just hit it back and just hit it back and watch this. This is what normally happens. The person would get angry and try to slam it. And almost always, they would hit the ball off the table. And there are some of you who are here who deal with conflict this way. This is the second way you deal with conflict. Be with anger. With anger. You explode with anger. Ladies, you're just like my father, you jerk. Men, you're definitely not my mother. And, and you explode with anger. Proverbs 18, verse 19 says, A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city. And this is why sometimes it takes days to resolve conflict in relationships because of what this verse teaches. <clears throat> because I grew up in a home where this is how my dad dealt with, with conflict. My dad was loud, just loud. And so I'm, I'm loud. We just loud. We talking about the game, you walk past the house, you think we're in an argument. No, we just discussing the game. It's just loud. So when conflict comes, my wife is more on the quiet side. So when conflict comes, I would just get loud and out talk her. And sometimes what comes with that will be anger. Well, that's, that's when I was young. I, you know, every now and then some burst of testosterone will come up and I would try to, and all, now, all she does now is just look at me. <laughs> Here's the thing, people deal with conflict like this. A lot of people deal with it in anger. Singles, let me talk to you for a minute. Singles, 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 I know you're out there. No one ever talks to us while I am now. 
singles, put up a red flag if the person you're dating deals with conflict by stomping out, exploding with anger, hanging up the phone on you. Proverbs 22 verses uh, 24 and 25 says, make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man do not go. Why? Verse 25, lest you learn his ways and set a snare for your soul. In other words, we become like the people we hang out with. The Bible says bad company corrupts good habits. The next thing you know, when you hang out like what the Bible tells us not to, when you hang out with the furious, angry person, then next thing you know, you start snapping on people, snapping on people on the job, the children, your spouse. Why? Because that's the type of person you're hanging out with. And singles, let me talk to you. Let me, let me, let me help you here. If that person you're dating deals with conflict, with anger, stomping out, all, and getting angry, hanging up the phone, they, you still talking, and they hung up on you. Let me, let me give you the best advice I can ever give you. Run. Run. And then you're in a restaurant, and they're getting all huffy. All, just, check, please. Check, 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 please. Or ladies, if it's you, um, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get freshened up and exit stage left. <laughs> He's still, oh, she got a lot of freshen up to be doing. Well, yeah, she does. She's at home now. <laughs> That's where she is. She's at the house. Run, run. See, I know for a lot of you singles, especially for you single ladies, you heard these verses and they have gone in one ear and out the other and you're going to stay with that angry man. Let me tell you why. He explodes on you. He yells at you. He's gotten physical with you. And you're staying with him. You know why? Because you feel stuck. And here's the thing. You know why? You'd have moved in with him. And what comes in with moving in with him, you know, already start having sex with him. And you feel trapped. You feel trapped. Let me tell you that there's always hope with God. There's always hope. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able, meaning able to resist. But with the temptation, here it is, make a way of an escape that you may be able to bear it. The Lord will always make a way for you to escape a, an abusive, angry individual. God makes a way of an escape. God is talking to somebody in here. He's making a way for you to get out of that situation. Gotten physical with you, just an angry person. The longer you stay with him, you're going to become like him. He's angry. He's angry because his, his father was not around or his father was abusive. He's angry. And now he's taking that anger out on poor you. And you feel trapped because you moved in and you're like, hey, it's expensive out here. I can, where am I going to go? God always makes a way of an escape that you may be able to bear. Somebody needs to hear that today because you feel like you're in a hopeless, trapped situation, but God loves you and he always makes a way out. Somebody needs to hear that. Ladies, God bless you. Somebody needs to hear that. Because God's making a way for you to get out of that, that explosive, angry situation. You don't have to stay in a bad relationship like that. Get out while God is speaking to you now. So, we have foxes of Roman numeral number one, unresolved conflict. Roman numeral number two, here it is. The fox of premarital sex. Oh, boy. This is the biggest fox to look out for. Because, see, when a couple starts hanging out and being together, love wants to naturally express itself. 
But when you give in, it ruins the relationship because now sex becomes the focal point of the relationship. The forbidden line has been crossed. Then guilt sets in, and then Satan brings condemnation. One wants to stop, but the other person puts a guilt trip on, on, um, on the other person. So she gives in or he gives in, and now a wedge is formed in the relationship because of this fox above all other little foxes. So we have Roman numeral number one, unresolved conflict. Roman numeral number two, premarital sex. It moves right into Roman numeral number three, the fox of mistrust and jealousy. Because sex has entered the relationship prematurely, it causes mistrust and jealousy. For example, I saw you looking at her. Don't deny it. Every time she gets up, you're cutting your eyes over at her. I saw you. And on top of that, another example. Why are you late? You said you would be here two minutes, 30 seconds ago. And you're late. See, you said you'll be right back. And all of these things can become a fox spoiling the relationship. And then moves right into Roman numeral number four, the fox of an unforgiving spirit. This is huge right here. This person refuses to accept the apology from the other. L singles, can I talk to you for a, a moment again? Please, put up a red flag and run. If the person you're in a relationship with is unforgiving, and if you feel like you are God and you don't make mistakes, beware because James 2.13 says judgment is without mercy to the one who shows no mercy. In other words, this verse is saying if you are unmerciful, unforgiving, when, not if, when you blow it and mess up and you will, no mercy will be shown to you. This is why Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Let me just say this to men. Be, be, be very sensitive. Be very sensitive. If you have a woman who's been hurt and mistreated by someone in the past, because, see, what happens is she's been hurt. And ladies, let me say, because you have not healed, you've chased off a lot of good men because you've become cynical, you become suspicious. All these things are things that has destroyed it's, it's, it's spring out of the hurt that you have and that you've never, never received healing from the Lord from. And you've chased off a lot of good men, a lot of them. Because all of a sudden, as soon as you start dating, you, you're, you're, on a, you're on a date somewhere. You're looking at that girl. I saw you. You're like, he's like, excuse me? Yeah. That girl just walked by. Yeah. And that dude is like, Deuces, I'm out of here. <laughs> check, check, please, check. He's out of here because you're suspicious, you're cynical. Hey, I just come to, you know, I want to come in and, and bring healing to you. I bet you do. See, you never healed. And you sabotage every person who would like to get to know you better. And men, we're no different. We get hurt too. You never had a father around, or you're angry at the one. And there's a lot of cultural things I'm hearing about. There's a lot of cultural things in the black community. There's a lot of cultural things in the Hispanic community. The Hispanic men and, and, and don't show affection, don't say I love you, and all that kind of mess. It ruins the kids. Don't allow your culture to ruin you. You better get your identity from Christ and from the Word of God, not your culture. You know, I know you, you, know, you all about them. Just, we're men. We're men. I, you better be a man. There's enough women here. 
I told you, our society won't be happy until they erase men altogether or make all of us men women. The devil's a liar. ain't doing me like that. I'm proud to be a man. But sometimes our, our, our cultural upbringing can ruin us, can ruin us. Because we were never told by our fathers that they love us. Therefore, you perpetuate it. And your boys never heard you say, I love you. Never. Because of some, some cultural thing that you are helping to perpetuate. Oh, I didn't say this first service. Somebody needs to hear this today in this service. There's, there are certain things about my culture, my community, my upbringing that I got to filter that through the word. And, and there's some things that are fine that we grew up with and all that kind of stuff, but we got to filter that thing through this word right here. And we got to be careful because a lot of times we can chase some really good women away and we can chase some really good men away because of hurt, and we never allowed Jesus to heal our wounded hearts. And I'm here to tell you there's a lot, I'm looking around there, there's a lot of wounded hearts here. And you're angry, you're upset because these men keep taking advantage of you because you're not healed, you're not whole. And Jesus wants to make you whole. He wants to heal your wounded heart so you're not constantly being taken advantage of by men. men the, the, those men that are out there that are predators, they, they can sniff out your hurt, your weakness, and take advantage of you. And it keeps happening. And it keeps happening. And the Lord wants to heal your heart. He wants to heal your heart. Because he wants to make you whole. The Bible says in Colossians 2.10, we're complete in him. He wants to complete you and make you whole. He wants to heal you of all the, the anger, the hurt, the jealousy, the suspicion. He wants to heal you of all that. He really does. And so that moves me to Roman numeral number five or the bonus, the bonus fox. This is a big one. This fox that can get into any marriage and any relationship, it is Roman numeral number five, the fox on the job or at the gym. That little fox. All of a sudden, there's issues at home and that little fox with that cute little pencil skirt she has on, all of a sudden smiled at you, and it felt good. Or that fox at the gym, and he said, oh, you're doing such a great job, and you're like, oh. <laughs> then next thing you know, you fix up yourself a little bit extra, and your husband was like, why are, you, why are you fixing up to go to the gym? What's wrong with you? What, what's going on? Oh, nothing. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. I just, you know, I just don't want to just go out just looking at any old kind of like, you're going to the gym. Oh, but you know, I just, yeah, I just throwing a little side of that <laughs> And that little fox. Men, let me tell you something. If you don't tell your wife how beautiful she is, if you don't tell her how she looks, how special she is, you love her, Satan will bring a fox along to tell her for you. And then another guy at the gym or on the job or at the grocery store, that fox is starting to deposit love points in your wife's account. And definitely, she will start to fix herself up a little bit extra to go to the store, to the gym, or to the job, just so she can get some more love points. Satan doesn't mind bringing this type of fox your way. He 
he's really good at it because he knows what type of fox you like. If you like the real real thin little fox, he bring a little real thin <laughs> little fox your way. You like a nice, healthy, curvy fox. <laughs> I think women just ought to be curvy and just. <laughs> He'll bring that fox too. And I tell you, that's the fox that can be most dangerous. Because if you like oranges, Satan is not going to bring grapes to you. He's going to bring nice big sun-kissed oranges your way. Or let me put it in terms you can understand. If you like, if you like avocados, <laughs> he's not going to bring apples your way. You like nice avocados. You know, I'm trying to become an avocado person now, you know. We, you know, when we lived here, ugh, about 30 years ago when we lived here, we had six orange trees and three avocado trees. We used to let the avocados fall to the ground. We used to take them, me and my sons, and we just chuck them. There's no avocados in the hood where we from. We didn't know what those things, what are those things? A little hard shell, green, a little dark. We didn't know... Every time I tell that, when I come out to California, they say, that's straight blasphemy. That's, 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 black. that's almost the unforgivable sin. But watch out for that fox. That's the fox that can be very dangerous to all of us. It doesn't matter how old you are. Did you know David sinned with Beersheba when he was 50 years old? So it's not like, oh, yeah, that's for those young men. I'm old now. I'm 50 plus years old. That's how old David was. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter at all. That fox is dangerous. Now, let me talk to you this last part. I want to talk to you about the fox that can get into our lives spiritually. Because remember I said that the fox comes in, eat the blossom, keeps it from bearing a bud and keep, keeping the grape, the fruit, from forming. The fruit that the Lord wants to form in our lives is Galatians 5, and 23. It, it, the fruit of the Spirit is love. Fruit singular is love. I know what you said. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. Joy, joy. Stop. Fruit singular of the Spirit is love. Out of agape love, God's love, comes joy and peace and long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, and self-control. But this is the fruit God wants to bear in our lives. But when we allow a fox in our lives spiritually, instead of us being loving, we're unloving. Instead of us being kind, we're unkind. Instead of us being patient, we're impatient. Instead of us exercising self-control, we're out of control. Look at your life right now spiritually. Are you out of control in some area of your life? It shows that you have allowed a fox in your life spiritually. Are you unkind when you get in your car and get on these roads? I don't blame y'all. I'm telling me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how y'all do. We were coming back last night. It was 10 o'clock at night. I'm seeing red lights and back and people slowing up. I said, what's going on at 10 o'clock at night? I said, I can't imagine 10 o'clock in the morning. It's nuts here. I don't know how y'all do. How do y'all do that? That's why when I, when I say, <laughs> that's why when, I, when people on social media, Pastor Tony, when you're coming back out here? I say, hey, I'll be out here this day. Well, where are you going to be? And I said, you know, I'm going to be at this church in this city. Oh, that's too far. I said, that's only 10 minutes from you. What do you mean that's too far? Because 10 minutes may take 10 hours <laughs> because of the traffic here. But when we allow a fox to get in our lives spiritually, everything that the fruit of the Spirit is supposed to bear in our lives, we begin to experience the opposite of that. 
Instead of being gentle, we're harsh. Instead of us being any of the, instead of us experiencing joy, we experience the opposite of joy. Look at your life spiritually where you are right now, spiritually with the Lord. If you're not bearing love, unconditional love, agape love, God's love, if you don't experience joy and peace and long-suffering and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and kindness and self-control, if you're not experiencing those things, there's a fox in your life spiritually. And it is keeping your life from bearing the fruit that God wants it to bear. And the Lord loves you and he wants that out of your life. He wants it out and wants you to build a wall around that area so the fox doesn't jump back in. And this is why the Lord bringing these things out in our lives. Let me close with this. See, these little foxes that we allow unconfessed, unresolved conflict, being unforgiving, allowing foxes to get in our lives spiritually. The Lord brought these things out because he loves us and he wants our lives to bear fruit. He wants our relationship to bear fruit. He wants our marriages to bear fruit. But we allow foxes to get in and to rob us of what God wants from us. Singles, I already told you. Singles, hey, you dating somebody that's an angry, an angry elf? Run. You don't have to put up with that. And, the, and on top of the exploding in anger, getting, getting physical, and there is no ring? Tell him, deuces, I'm out. Or if you, like I said, at the restaurant, uh, I got to go powder my nose and, head, and go right through the kitchen. You know, on the back door of the kitchen, head right on out. Ta ta taxi, Uber, or whoever. <laughs> you get up out of there. You don't have to put up with that. Don't put up with that. And if he's here right now, I'm telling you, if you've been physical with that woman, you got problems. Because that woman is a daughter of the king. And he don't take it too kindly, you mistreating his daughters. And I'm telling you right now, he's going to get you. He's going to get you. He's going to get you. Trust me. It's time, you know, you, after being married for so long now, 30 plus years for us, <laughs> my wife used to just say one thing to me. I'm praying for you. I, I knew it was over. It was over for me. <laughs> God was going to get me. I knew it. I, 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 you know, I was toast. God was going to get me. Now I just, I stay on the straight and narrow. I, ooh, uh, because she prays for me, God knows how to get me. And God does, the, and, and let me tell you something. He knows how to get in contact with me. He knows my number, knows where I live. He don't take too kindly for me messing over his daughter. I, gotta, I, I have a, a father-in-law in heaven. It don't take too kindly if I mess over his daughter. God's going to get you. You better repent. This is your opportunity to repent. Remember, we come here. Hey, out of all the messages to hear, God brought you here to hear this. You better get it right with him. And finally, there are some of you who have never repented of your sin and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today should be the day of salvation for you because you cannot love that woman as Christ loved the church, without experiencing that love yourself. You cannot extend forgiveness without first understanding what it means to be forgiven. And today is going to be the day of salvation for you. There's going to be some folks available to pray with afterwards. And so you can come forward and do business with God. But the Lord loves you. That's why he brought you here to hear this message. There are some of you that's going to be set free from some ungodly 
messed up, jacked up relationships. And today, God has given you the way of an escape so you'll be able to bear it. And there are some of you right now, I'm telling singles, I've helped. For those of you who are single, I've helped you. I came all the way from Virginia to help you. You remember, I'm your friend. Came all the way from Virginia. Run from that, that, that guy. That guy got some issues. And you allow God to work on Now, if God fix him up and bring y'all back together, if you are available, okay. But don't settle for his mess. Getting physical with you and stuff. I know some women today, boy. You want to do what? You better, you better put, them, put them up your... They won't take that. <laughs> I know some women, my height and taller, they like, okay, you want to do what? We're going to knuckle up in here. <laughs> oh, but that's not the way to deal with it. But I tell you, these, some of these women ain't going to let you fool with them. You going to do what? Try that one more time. We'll tear this house up together. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> But God wants you to be in a healthy situation, a God honoring, but you got to get the foxes out. May God help us to get the foxes out and put a wall, not a fence, a wall around the vineyard of our lives.